The three articles I read were a review of the idea of historical recurrence in Western thought from antiquity to the Reformation by Charles Trinkhaus, Future, Past, Time and Teleology and Ancient Historiography by Jonas Grethlein and Machiavelli, Polybius, and Giannis Lascaris, the Hexter Thesis Revisited by John von Fasani. The first article was the longest and provided a great deal of insight into the nature of historical recurrence, providing context for his criticism of the book he reviewed. The author first exposes where the idea of the cyclical nature of government came from, being Plato, which played such a large role in Polybius' book six of his histories. Then the author fleshes out the way that the cyclical idea of Plato's understanding of life transformed into the idea of the cyclical nature of governance and political systems. The author then goes on to elaborate how Polybius' perspective became an integral part of Machiavelli's writings which then in turn influenced all the Western European governments experiencing revolution and also the founding members of the U.S. government as they produced the various documents which ultimately became the foundation for American government. The author's main thesis is that Tomp, the author of the reviewed book, was very well informed and produced a great deal of well-conceived research, though at times there are lulls of laborious pedantry which could detract from the overall flow of the work. The biggest critique of the book from the reviewer is that he questions the conclusions of Tromp the conclusions that Tromf draws on Machiavelli. He does not buy the idea that Machiavelli was drawing sound conclusions as to the nature of political success with the state executive authorities, namely princes or governors from his time. The reviewer elaborates on how the author of the book came to those conclusions and then provides rather sound arguments that provide substance to the idea that Machiavelli may have integrated more sources than just Polybius and Vegetius, the two most often cited primary influences on Machiavelli's art of war. The author concludes his review talking about how other sources may have tempered Machiavelli and how the tempering may not have been obvious to the author of the reviewed book due to a potential unfamiliarity with St. Augustine's work, for example and that those works may have had a greater effect on Machiavelli's mode of thinking than Polybius did. While I do not agree with that sentiment particularly, it is based on a sound familiarity with Renaissance thinking. The second article I read was Future Past by Jonas Grethlein. This article is about the psychological and cultural effects on perspective and how those influence historiography. As an anthropologist myself, I am inclined by my own academic bias to agree. The author argues that the setting within which Polybius was writing determined how he was going to write. For example, Polybius was a Greek writing for and about the Romans. His Greek sympathies would undoubtedly affect his, pers his perspective on the Romans, even though he was an obvious Roman sympathizer. Next, the idea that Polybius was writing for the future as a chronicler about past events also influenced how he approached the subject. Naturally, like Thucydides, the idea that future generations would be reading his work influenced the light in which he reflected on his material. The author continues about the temporal dynamic influencing the work of historians and that that precedent set by Polybius uh, remains to this day for better and for worse. After describing the works of Polybius and Sallust, the author continues by demonstrating the same temporal, cultural, and psychological effects on writers who conceived of the notion that their works were for posterity, as they wrote at other times reflecting directly and indirectly on the works of Polybius and Sallust. The author includes authors to the modern day and demonstrates the Polybian model, which is also in turn reflective of the Thucydidean model of generations before. Finally, the author talks about post-structuralism and the effects of the modern academic movements of the mid-20th century and beyond. The author ends on elaborations on how some academic movements are destructive because of the boundless relativity that removes focus and necessary limitations on scholarly productivity. The third article is that of John Monfasani called Machiavelli, Polybius, and Giannis Lascaris, the Hexter Thesis Revisited. The author demonstrates that there are obvious and direct links between Polybius and Machiavelli. There was some doubt up until very recently as to whether Machiavelli would have been able to read a Latin copy of Polybius because there was not any available documentation to show for it. However, through very deliberate and dedicated research, the author shows very articulately that there must have been some direct reading by Machiavelli who did not speak Greek and would not have been able to translate the works of Polybius. Subsequently, there have been documents found which prove beyond any doubt that Machiavelli did indeed read a Latin copy of Polybius, uh, as shown in correspondence with contemporaneous authors, but those documents were unearthed after this paper was written in 2016. Even so, with the curtain pulled back, this author makes a convincing argument that would bear the burden of proof necessary to convince most people, and the article is one of many uh, contemporary ones that sought to do just that. There are verbatim of tra translations of Machiavellian sections which come directly out of Vegetius's De Remilitari and Machiavelli's Art of War, which would not have been smooth translations out of Greek. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your evening.